warm welcome back to part two of Wicklow County Matters brought to you this week from Kapoor Estate in West Wicklow. Well, after that high octane first half, we're going to wind things down a little bit by going over to one of the self catering houses here on the Kapoor Estate where we're going to be meeting artist Philip Moran. Philip is going to talk to us about some of the publications he's been involved in and his up and coming exhibition along with his plans for the future. And in the meantime, I'm going to eat a few more toasted marshmallows. Philip, thank you so much for joining us on today's show. Can I ask you how you got into art? Emily, it was something I always, uh, I always did since a very young age, and uh, drawing was just one of my was one of my hobbies and passions. And just over the years, I, uh, you know, I kept doing it, and then also I. Uh, I did it in, in school, and uh, I, I seemed to have a knack for it anyway. And uh, uh, through the encouragement of my teacher, I ended up going to art college, various art colleges, and uh, not. And I've been outside art college. Uh, it was about ten years ago. I went back then recently again to uh, NCAD and studied uh, visual communication there. So it's always been a, it's always been a part of my life, really. What kind of books have you worked on, and do you love it? Yeah, I do. I mean, the the books sort of came by accident. I had, we, we, I worked on a book in in the college letterpress, uh, which was hand hand set type, and I can show it to you here actually. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, it's a book on the book I did on the Tet Offensive, which is a battle in Vietnam, and. These these prints. So these are hardcore topics. Do you how do you feel more pressurised when you're dealing with things like that, or no, not particularly. I mean, I, it's just uh, it interests me. Um, I think the reason I made this book on the Tet Offensive was a, simply an exploration as to why it was the turning point in the Vietnam War. But as uh, I did it from both sides, did this, uh, the story from both sides, the Americans and the Vietnamese. They're incredible drawings. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, these are made into prints, which are then printed up, printed in the, the college press. And Phil, did these inspire your recent exhibition, which received rave reviews? Well, it, it, I don't know if it received rave reviews, but people liked it. Um, Our artists are very modest. Yeah, people <laughs> liked it. Um, yeah, no, my, my recent show was actually on free speech and I wanted to uh, depict people uh, who had been, who had sort of uh, fought for free speech or campaigned for it or in their own way had tried to, uh, I don't know, they, it, it's just something that free speech is very hard to pin down, but uh, it seemed to coincide with um, the recent tragedies that happened in Paris and also other, uh, other attacks and other, and I just felt in general that um, free speech was something that was really under attack. I'm admiring your pictures here. They're absolutely fantastic. Can you talk me through these? Are these done with ink as well? Uh, yes, they are actually. Um, the thing is that a lot of people, this, is, um, this picture is of Thomas Paine, and he was um, a, f a famous sort of writer who inspired the American and French revolutions. But uh, yeah, no. They, they I like the style. They're so kind of old worldy. Yeah, that's right. Really uh, different. They kind of look like old photographs, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they really do. Well, the, one of the things about doing the portraits and doing them all in the similar style is that no matter, regardless of the fact that many of these people are separated by centuries, um, they're all people, and uh, having them all in the same style really kind of uh, gives them a sort of unity. Um, but yeah, no, the, these are actually all are done with ink, and a lot of people were, are always at, were asking me on the night, which is kind of which I pleased me was uh, how did you do them? Uh, they thought they were done with charcoal or some other some other method. But the way I did them, and I can show you an example here. Would you mind talking us through what you're going to do here? And for the purpose of today, we've picked something really simple so people at home can learn yeah, some I mean, tricks. Yeah, the, the idea is that uh, this is the, the idea where you, you're kind of mixing uh, drawing with painting in a sense because I'm just going to start off with this very simple line drawing where I just create the simply the outlines. Um, this is this ink is called uh, quink ink, and it was used. A lot of people of, of a certain um, age will, will will know this ink from um, from their school days. Well, I didn't use it myself. Was now. it for fountain pens? It was for fountain pens. Yes. Okay. I'm not actually that old, but it does look familiar yeah. from and what the, the way back when. The beauty of this ink, I got to know got to know about this ink in college when we were doing um, sort of life drawing classes. Uh, is that it, uh, if you add water to it after after uh, using it and drawing with it, after, when you, once you add water to it, constituent parts separate. But the beauty of it is it's completely random. 
So when I was using this ink before, and I was trying to uh, manipulate uh, this effect, I couldn't really do it, it was far too messy. And um, I, then I then discovered that once I used uh, oil pastel, and I had colorless transparent oil pastel, so I think it's used mainly for, for, for blending uh, colors, this would actually resist the water. So when I add the water, you'll see it now in a second. It's like Don Conroy here. <laughs> I use sort of white or colourless oil pastel okay. to prevent sort of to sort of to seal in these areas. So, that's, so the that's what you're going over the yeah. This is the hi it highlights these areas. It's good to show people something simple as well, especially when you're illustrating a technique, because I think it's easier to show people at home on something simple. Uh, adding water on top of the ink causes the ink to spread. Okay, and people might think that adding water would would ruin things. They would think that. No, no. Uh, this is um, this is this is the, uh, the whole the whole kind of the, the the fun of it, really, because it sort of it creates a sort of a random effect. So it, what turns it, what is actually a drawing into kind of more like what is a, like a painting. And did you discover this technique through pure experimentation? Yeah, no. I've, I'm always experimenting. Already, you can sort of see how the whole thing is just completely transformed, and it's gone from sort of being a drawing. To being, um, to being more like a painting or, I don't know, uh, a wash or whatever. Well, Philip, you've been hard at work there. Are we ready to reveal to the viewers your picture? Well, it's just a sketch, but, you know, this is the, the show. Oh, my God. Oh, thanks very much. That is incredible how they've come to life. Literally, they're jumping out from the page. Yeah, no, it, it, this is the thing, like, where it's, it, it's a drawing, but the, 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 the actually adding water and allowing the water to take its effect on the ink. It's and incredible. Then, and then having a me measure of control with the, uh, with the, the oil pastel, which is sort of the wax as well, it, cr it sort of helps. You have a sort of measure of control over something that is ultimately random, and it uh, it's, it's a, creates a surprise for me as well. A huge 